What's up, guys? Fantasy Joe back here with some more fantasy football content. Today, I'm going to be breaking down all the winners and losers from the 2021 NFL Draft. Going to be talking fantasy football, who are the winners and losers um, from the draft, not just who was drafted, but mainly the players left on the teams that they were drafted, that were already on teams, and how the NFL Draft is going to affect them for fantasy moving forward. If you're new to the, if you're new to the channel, please hit that like button, hit that comment button. Down below, I'll respond as always, and hit that subscribe button to stick around, share it to your friends. Thank you guys for watching. Let's hop into it. Okay, so our first winner, we have Sam Darnold. Now, the reason for this, they took Terrace Marshall Jr. in the second round. I think he was a great pick for them. Reunites Terrace Marshall Jr., a talented wide receiver with Joe Brady. He's tall, six foot three, quick guy, fast. Um, Good route runner, really an explosive player all around. Kind of overshadowed while he was at LSU by Jamar Chase and Justin Jefferson. And then this last year, obviously didn't have great quarterback play and only played a few games this year. But a really talented receiver that gets to be now reunited, added to that dangerous weapon, added to the dangerous weapons that Sam Donald already has with Christian McCaffrey, Robbie Anderson, DJ Moore. Really some dangerous weapons there as well as adding Brady Christensen, a tackle from BYU in the third round, as well as Tommy Trimble, um, a tight end from Notre Dame, who I think could contribute a lot at the NFL level right away, either as a fullback or as a tight end. Um, so, yeah, they add a lot of weapons, help protect Sam Darnold. I just think he's in a position to succeed this next year moving forward. Um, let's hop into our next guy. So we have another winner, Justin Herbert and Austin Eckler. Now, these guys are winners because in the first round, they took Rashawn Slater in the fourth round. Or I mean, I, excuse me. They took Rashawn Slater in the first round. They added another receiver, Josh Palmer, later for Justin Herbert, I believe. And the winner, yeah, these guys are big, big winners, though, because we saw what Justin Herbert was able to do last year, throw through 31 touchdowns, break the rookie record. And that was with the worst offensive line in football. We saw Austin Eckler dominate at the beginning of the season when he was healthy as well. And again, behind the worst offensive line in football, as created by PFF last year. And now they've added, you know, Brian Bologna missed a lot of games at right tackle last year. He'll be back and hopefully healthy this year. At center, they've added Corey Lindsley, the, the highest graded center last year in all of football. And then they went out and drafted um, left tackle Rashawn Slater in the first round, who was, you know, some people's number one tackles this year, even over Panay Sewell. Very talented player. And that left tackle spot for them has really been bad recently. So I think all of a sudden you got Justin Herbert who dominated last year. And now all of a sudden you give him an actually good offensive line or much, much better than he had last year. Same thing with Eckler. I think these guys are going to open up more holes for him. I think the offense in general is just going to be so much more successful. With the influx of offensive line talent, they also signed Matt Filer this year, an offensive guard. So a lot of things are heading in the right direction for them for sure. And that's why these guys are such big winners in fantasy football for me. Just think that they are going to be able to do even a lot more than they did last year. Okay, our first loser. We have James Robinson. James Robinson handled over 70% of the touches for the Jacksonville Jaguars running backs last year. And then in the first round this year, the 25th overall selection, they drafted Travis Etienne running back from Clemson. Etienne is super talented, all-time leading rusher in the ACC, all-time leading touchdown scorer in the ACC. And when you draft a running back in the first round, you plan on giving him the ball. So that's the biggest reason why James Robinson's a loser. And he dominated in fantasy because he was able to get that ridiculous touch percentage, getting more, uh, getting basically more of those running back touches, or higher percentage than any other backs, really, in the NFL almost. And now you bring in a guy like Travis Etienne who's going to immediately steal a lot of those receptions on third down right away. And as well as, you know, he was drafting the first round, he's going to get his touches on first and second down as well. So I do think James Robinson's a big loser for fantasy football. Okay, next up we got a winner, Clyde edwards helaire I don't think many people are looking at Clyde edwards helaire as a huge winner, which I think is a big, big mistake for fantasy football. I think when you look at this thing from a holistic standpoint, sure it wasn't a draft pick, but they traded their first round pick and they picked up Orlando Brown Jr. from the Baltimore Ravens to come in and play left tackle for them. He's going to be very talented. He played it last year. Saw him do it successfully. So that's a major upgrade for them at that left tackle spot. They'd already signed Joe Thune in free agency. Not sure exactly where he's going to play. Is a left guard typically, but has played tackle before. Has the ability to play tackle. So we'll see if he ends up being a left guard or tackle. But either way, is a very good offensive lineman. 
who's going to be able to step up and be a major upgrade for them right away. And then they drafted Creed Humphrey later in the draft, I believe in the second round. I think he's going to be a instant day one starter and an upgrade for them at center. And a very talented player by the first or second set, uh, center in this draft from a town perspective. And so, yeah, I just think with all these major upgrades along the offensive line, Clyde Edwards Hilaire is a huge winner. Patrick Mahomes is a winner too, but Patrick Mahomes was really already a winner, but it's doing very well in fantasy to begin with. But I think Clyde Edwards Hilaire, these offensive line upgrades are what going to allow him to make that next step in fantasy, hopefully punch in a few more rushing touchdowns as well as still being utilized in that passing game. And I expect him to be utilized even more this upcoming season. So next up, we've got our loser, Melvin Gordon. Melvin Gordon's a loser because he was one of the biggest winners of free agency when Philip Lindsay ended up leaving the Denver Broncos to head to the Houston Texans. But then the Denver Broncos selected Javante Williams running back from North Carolina with the number 35 overall pick. Not only did they pick him so high in the second round, they traded up to get him, trading a fourth-round pick and getting a sixth-round pick back. Um, so, yeah, Melvin Gordon, a guy we thought was going to dominate the workload this year, is definitely not going to anymore, and Javante Williams is a long-term plan after this. Melvin Gordon's got one more year left on his deal, and when you draft a guy that high, I expect them to, you know, I think Melvin Gordon will still get a good amount of touches this year because they don't want to run their rookie into the ground right away, but... When you draft a guy that high, he's going to get the ball year one no matter what. So I think that will definitely cut into a big portion of Melvin Gordon's workload. And yeah, I just think it was a big bummer for Melvin Gordon for sure in, in, in fantasy football. Moving on to our next player, our next winner, we have Miles Gaskin. The Dolphins, the reason Miles Gaskin is such a winner is the Dolphins were one of the teams that was highly speculated on taking a running back, potentially using one of those early first round picks on a running back, and they did not take a running back until the seventh round of the draft. So that was a major dub for Gaskin. And then they took Liam Eichenberg, the tackle from Notre Dame, in the second round to help upgrade that offensive line. They'll help Tua as well, obviously. But I think Gaskin's a huge winner because I think a lot of people did think he was going to be replaced. Showed a lot of talent last year. Um, had 41 receptions in 10 games, which is a ton. And I expect him to just continue to be very good for fantasy. He's a really good flex league, but uh, he would be a really good flex if you can get him, I think, because he's going to, you know, the Dolphins showed last year that they like to use one guy as that kind of workhorse role, or at least on a game to game basis, they want a workhorse basically to help wear those defenses down or whatever they're thinking. Maybe they like it. Gaskins the best or whatever it is. But even when Gaskins went down, they use Ahmad, Salvin Ahmad. In that role, um, where he was getting basically all the touches. So, Gaskin's definitely a huge winner from this draft and a player I would be excited to draft in 2021 because of it. And next up, we've got a loser, Miles Sanders. Now, Miles Sanders is a loser in this because the, the Philadelphia Eagles took Kenneth Gainwell, running back from Memphis. He held out last year, or didn't hold out, excuse me, opted out because of COVID. But in 2019, he absolutely dominated. And the thing about Gainwell and why Miles Sanders is such a loser, it wouldn't matter to me as much if they took you know a running back in the fifth round, but Gainwell had over 50 receptions last year in college, and that's where Miles Sanders thrives in the NFL is getting a ton of that passing game work. And I think Gainwell is going to come in right away and steal a good amount of that. I think that's why they took him. He can, you know, he's a talented runner as well, but he's definitely going to take some of that pass catching work from Miles Sanders. So Miles Sanders is definitely a loser in fantasy football because of this. All right, next up, we have our winner, A.J. Brown. Honestly, one of the biggest winners in the entire NFL draft, in my mind. The Tennessee Titans were highly speculated to take you know, some weapons after losing Corey Davis and Jonathan Smith to free agency. And they didn't take a receiver until the fourth round when they took Des Fitzpatrick. And we saw A.J. Brown dominate last year on only 106 targets, and he missed two games. Played in 14 games on 106 targets. He had 70 receptions, 1,075 yards, 11 touchdowns. And again, that was in 14 games. And then following the season, he had surgery on both of his knees. Said doctor said he shouldn't have even been, should not have even been playing in the NFL season that year. But he dominated, and that was on 106 targets. I think with the all the targets that left town already, I think he's you know he has that 150 target ceiling in him that I don't think he's ever had before when he's drafted. And if you see, we have no idea what AJ Brown's stats are going to look like with 150 targets. I mean, he could have. 1,400 yards, 15 touchdowns, 85 receptions, 95 receptions. Like, he could be 
I mean, ridiculous, honestly. The, the ceiling for him with that kind of target volume is almost unlimited. I think A.J. Brown is going to be a downer receiver in fantasy, a guy I'm not afraid to take in the second round by any means. Absolutely love A.J. Brown moving forward. And now I'm going to do some honorable mentions on some winners as well. Joe Burrow, you know, they brought in Jamar Chase with that fifth pick, brought in Jackson Carmen later in the draft, a tackle from Clemson who can help protect him. Tua Tagovailoa, you know, they brought in some offensive linemen, as I said, with Gaskin, bringing in Liam Eikenberg in the second round, as well as drafting Jalen Wild in the first round, so got him some weapons, got him some protection. Jalen Hurts as well, they trade up, got Devonta Smith at that 10th selection, got him a weapon that will definitely help him out, got him a true, true number one receiver. So I just want to throw those guys in there as some honorable mention winners. Um, if you guys made it to this point in the video, please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button to stick around for more videos. And if you have any questions or comments, leave them down in the comment section down below. Let me know who I missed, who you would have as a winner or a loser. And yeah, I'll respond as always. Thank you guys so much for watching. Until next time, this has been Fancy Joe. I'm out.